Welcome back to another action figure review. In this review, we're going to be taking a look at Joy Toys The Wandering Earth 118 scale action figure. There's three figures in their set, and they come individually boxed and individually sold. This is two of three, and this is the packaging that it comes in. On the front of the box, we have a nice window display of the character and some of the accessories. On the bottom right, we have some Chinese and the Wandering Earth logo. On the top of the box, we have the Joy Toy logo. Bottom of the box, Joy Toy logo. On the side of the box here, we have the Wandering Earth, product parameters, company information, and a note. So kind of pause and read that if you would like. On this side of the box, we have warnings for drinking hazard small parts for ages under three. These are recommended for ages at least 15 and up. We have the Wandering Logo logo there and the Chinese, the UPC, and some other symbols on the bottom left there. These are coming in a pretty nice box. Flexible plastic, pretty cool. I'm gonna slide this out. Let's set the box aside. As most Joy Toy figures, we have a product insert. Very nice artwork on the front with the Chinese with the Wandering Earth um, name. So we're going to fold this. We have component parts showing the figure with all the accessories removed and three figures that are in this set. On this side, we have precautions. Do recommend you pause and read that if you do want to pick this set up. And just below that, we have a, a disassembly example. If you need to remove your gear or replace joints, if you have those available. Here's the figure in the clamshell. It's really, really cool. So it just held by friction. We'll toss that aside and we'll take a look at the figure. I've had these figures for a while. It's really hard to you know determine what reviews to do first. So kind of these guys kept getting pushed back for a while. And with the new 10th Legion Flying Cavalry, I thought it'd be a perfect opportunity to get these done because they do use the uh, exoskeleton suit off these guys and they uh, retool them. For the new uh for the new uh, legion so let's go ahead and take a look at this guy let's take a look at that head sculpt very nice like i said these are author a wandering earth movie which is done in chinese unfortunately i don't I'm not aware if there is a english dub version but you would have to read the entire movie if uh, you'd like to see it. it, looks like it'd be a pretty good movie. I kind of shy away from it because I don't want to read a two hour movie. It's not because I'm lazy, it's just uh, it's the idea of pausing it and then trying to catch up on it. So sometimes the uh, dialogue goes pretty quickly and then you want to uh, pause and try to catch up on the storyline. You can see with this head, he has shaved there around the side of his head, around his ears. Combed over to the side. Nice head sculpt. As you can see, the eyes are pretty good. I'm not sure if you're aware, but there's all water slide decals that they use for the eyes. Got a kind of a scowl on his on his face. Looks either determined or mad. Here on the chest, you can see the logos, flag, and the Chinese flag. The excess upper excess suit. It's actually, this is actually two parts. This waist piece is for the bottom half, which we'll get to. Let's take a close look at this exoskeleton on the top half. Do you have these bars that snap into his chest, which kind of follows suit with the 10th Legion. Here on this side, we do have articulation here, articulation right there. And he's kind of just push over the arms. So you don't have to remove the hands on these guys. 
just have these like C shapes that just snap right over like this. So on the back of here, um, I didn't do, do too much articulations on the exosuit because I've done it for the flying calvaries and I've done it for yeah, I haven't done it for the uh, first version of these guys, but give you very nice detail. So we'll go over a little more on this character articulation here, articulated there. Very nice. Do we have articulation here? There's like a little slit here that this pulls out of, as you can see. And it goes right back in, so that's articulated also. We get out of that close-up view right there goes right back in I really thought they would have done a different backpack because you don't have the minigun box here that you don't need for the armature but I guess it's cheaper just to rehash the same parts so you don't have to get new molds and run a production run for a new set of figures so this is pretty much going to be pointless this piece here unless you want to swap out mini guns between your characters articulation here articulation here articulation here on the other arm articulation there there pretty cool these front pieces here have articulation here 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 and here let's go take a 360 look at that uh, armor up armor before we move on there's a nice silver here that breaks up the coloring I do love these gloves. They look fantastic. The amount of paint and detail on them, in my opinion, looks very good. Silver here on the back. Some silver dots here. Silver, silver, silver. Very nicely done. I do like, I like to have a whole exoskeleton done in a silver or black wash. I think that'd be very cool. Could be a good idea for a custom. All right, so that is the upper half of that suit. Let's go ahead and take a look at the bottom half of this exoskeleton here. So we have a belt that goes on his waist. Do we have these pistons here? Come down, it's articulated right here. Articulated here, here. And we have those C clips that go around his ankles. As you can see, it moves very well. Both sides are the same. We do have the thigh pad that has the pistol holster here on the front of the thigh instead of on the side. Technically, they probably could have put a joint here, but I don't know if that could be an aesthetic from the movie. But they also fall through with the silver touches throughout the leg section, which is really good. On the back, we have the white hoses with the silver connector pieces. Very really nice, it's kind of has some uh, some weathering to it. And it looks like we have a little bit of red there on the boot, right there. Very cool. So let's look at the articulation of this figure. Well, first off, let me give you a 360 look of the figure one last time and then we will take a look at that articulation and then we'll go ahead and get into the accessories and see how those work out for him and how they work you know with holding them and that helmet is one of my favorite pieces I think you guys will enjoy the review for that helmet at least okay for the head it does move side to side you just go back a little bit it does look down this is a two-piece, so most of that movement was coming from the, the lower neck part. And then the head is on a ball, which is actually 60, but what's happening right now is that's the neck piece moving. You really have to try to get a hold of that neck so you can utilize the joint on the upper part of the neck. But it will get you a wide range of motion that you commonly expect or want in the uh, premium figure. Now the shoulder joints or the ball joints, they will rotate 360, but you're going to have to remove all the gear if you want that feature. There's um, 
360 rotation here in the elbow, but you're not going to get it because this this apparatus here, but there is an elbow bend, and the apparatus does work with the um, bend of the elbows. It will get you 90 degrees, so that looks really good. Follow suit. Very nice. For the hands, uh, they rotate 360 all the way around. And this one here goes down and up. This one's also 360 rotation, but this one will do the in and out of, uh, so for your, if you want to hold the gun with two hands. As you can see, there is chest articulation here. You can turn them sideways on both sides. There is a, an ab crunch and back some, not too much though. And it rotates 360. If you remove all the uh, gear here on the lower level, kind of gets in the way. So we have a, when you spread the legs, you can see what happens to the uh, belt garment piece. It rises up, it gets you about that far. Not too much with this because you can see the, that this is stretching. So be careful. You don't want to break that. These are uh, small, thin pieces. They're not cheaply made, but they're uh, definitely um, possibly break. Then we have thigh rotation. We have uh, double jointed knees on both legs. Looks good. And then we have, uh, for his feet, they do pivot down, they do pivot up, back to stationary. Um, we have a little bit of side to side motion. You can get the foot a 360 rotation all the way around if you desire. It's kind of awkward when you do it, it kind of rotates around the ball. Overall, this is a nice figure. Um, there's a lot going on in this figure. So, you're definitely going to have uh, some hindrance in your uh, possibility because on this guy that I have, the first one I did, this car, when I bring this arm across for holding the uh, actual weapon, this PC is popping off. It doesn't have the, doesn't seem to have the ability to uh, stay with the arm after a certain distance is reached. So, let's take a look at uh, his accessories. Here we have a small pistol. So like this is the same pistol that came with the first character. Very unique. Probably straight out of the movie, not sure. It's black plastic. Let's see, hands are very soft. So you can get the gun in pretty good. It's a nice trigger finger there. So it gives us some realistic um, poses and an overall look. Looks really, really cool. And uh, so let's see how he fits in this holster here. Just to go this way. This is a very small weapon. It's definitely going to be prone to being lost. I just dropped it. So let's see if I can get that in there through the camera. Uh, it fits. It's not the best. It's the same holster as the other one, but uh, uh, kind of fits a little better that way. Yeah, that's even better. Probably goes better that way, yeah. It's hard to tell because of uh, the black on black. But it fits really, really nice. The stay in suit for, for guns. I guess this is a saw rifle. Very unique sculpting. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but this is like a flat black and then we have like some very light gray wash over this uh top piece here so to give it some weathering so it's not really black i'm not sure how well it's gonna come through on the camera so we have our clip in the back we have a little scope or maybe 
a dust side submachine gun type weapon. Uh, I don't know how well he's going to hold this. I mean, I'm not even sure where this. I guess we're going to have to go right here for the hand. I do, I do not appreciate these pieces. I mean, I get the overall aesthetic of it, but for playability, it definitely makes it difficult. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, and I'm going to try to get that in, and I'll give you my uh, opinion on how hard it was. Okay, so it's putting that in his hands kind of fiddly. Um, the trigger finger is kind of it's soft plastic. The trigger finger is like separated from the other three fingers. You got to get that trigger finger up around that top section, and then the other hand should just go ahead and grip the bottom section. Like you get your you have this hoop, and then you have the bottom hoop. Get that trigger finger right in there, and then these three fingers will hold the bottom. So with the soft plastic, it kind of fiddle fiddly around, and uh, could be a little give you a little trouble, but. It's not too bad. He holds it pretty good. It's pretty tight to his um his shoulder. Um, bringing it across his chest may cause you some problems. You can see already that this piece has always been is now moving backwards, and there's some space between there, and it's going to um, separate from the arm. As you can see there. And he just dropped it because uh, it's it's really a unique hold for the gun. But it's definitely not a deal breaker because these are really, really cool figures. Um, that's probably the best I'm going to get through the camera. You see, I can not get that trigger finger to go up in that little section there. So, it's definitely a little fiddly. But overall, it looks pretty cool. Not bad. It's probably movie accurate, so we can't knock it. The last piece that we have, and in my opinion, is probably one of the best space helmets I've ever seen in one eighteen scale action figure. So we're gonna take a really nice look at this. We have a very beautiful clear down. Very nice. The amount of detail that went into these helmets and paint is well worth the uh, attention to detail. And you see we have some silver right here. We have some silver at the bottom. We have silver touches on this uh, um, device. We have some copper here on the back bottom, copper here on the back of the uh, helmet with some silver, uh, some silver dots here throughout. We have some more of that trim there very cool the front we have some red and silver and what's really nice they even put some paint on the inside you can see inside the helmet there we have a so um that's not silver it's gold either they are for the oxygen to come into the suit or maybe speakers to communicate with his team members I'm not sure but the overall detail they went above and beyond on this piece by itself so zoom out and these helmets if you anything like the first one they fit beautifully on the character and they look amazing it's actually a little round collar there that they sit on Let's see if I can get this to come down a little bit and there he is Looks very, very nice. Okay, for comparisons with his teammate, here he is. I'm trying to hold these guys, especially this guy, he has a lot going on. I'm going to set him down for one second so I can get a better uh, hold on these guys so you guys can see the back of them. So that stuff falling off. As you can see on the back, they are the same. Um, that's why we have the extra box right here. 
that's not even necessary so I was thinking that maybe they saved a little bit and I added that piece but they went ahead and added it anyway so this gives you the option if you want to take this load out and put it on this character if you like this character better but uh, I was uh, a little surprised that he had those extra pieces that wasn't relevant to the character but it's not a deal breaker as you can see here this piece does not like to flow when you get that far of a bend ratio so there's definitely a uh, a ding for the that, for this particular character at least and I'm sure it's because it is the same parts that um, it's going to be the same problem if you put the gear on the other figures so here is the heavy 10th Legion characters that uh, Joy Toy has used the same exoskeleton from for these guys and then they retold them so that's what they look like on the front um, you can see the chest pieces are you know snap into the armor which is a very I've never seen that before so I do like it um, so it's not a bad thing and not just gonna have his hand but I will say that the uh, armor the armor on the arms are been are different they are retooled and they stay better like I can get his arm across here see how his arm is almost the same position but that um, arm exoskeleton part remains in position so they definitely improved on it in my opinion um, turn these guys around real quick so you can see the back of them and guess what this is just lost this gun too guess they surrender let me go ahead and take off these uh jetpacks so you can see uh how retooled they are on the back of these guys this guy has become like my 2021 favorite figure so far so so you can see that they're not just basically a, a reuse parts there are reuse parts here you can see here here um and here um but this entire section and this armature here does not just like sit inside the backpack and it'll slit. It is definitely connected to the back of that jet pack. So very nicely done retooled for the 10th Legion Cavalry. So it's going to give you some nice versatile in your loadouts. So um, these are very, very cool. Overall, I do recommend them. If you're a big fan of Wandering Earth. There you are, probably the, I haven't seen, I don't know, there could be a different scale figures, but for 18 scale, I don't think there's any other ones out there that I know of. If there is, please feel free to comment below, let us all know, and uh, that we have options to, to buy other figures. For retail price, the minigun character, if you buy him by yourself, you're looking like 50 bucks. If you buy the other two characters, they're around 30 35 dollars. So, the best option, if you do want all of them, just to get them in the set. Because if you buy two, you're going to pay the same price for you know this guy and this guy that you would pay for all three with the additional third member. So, you might as well just pick them up for you know, getting more for your money. But, of course, it's your option. But, I do like putting out the information for you guys to make you know your decisions. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review and this look at this Wandering Earth character. If you did, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in our next review.